backstage, I'm sitting here with Faxo Hazard from Vermont. What's going on, Faxo? Not much. You know, just chilling. How are you? Not bad. Not bad at all. So, Faxo, uh, you're kind of new on the uh, scene here in Albany in the 518. Tell me a little bit about it. How did, how did, how, let me, you know, let, let's just go back to where you started at. Um, I heard that you were in the music for as far back as you can remember. Yeah. Tell me about that growing up. So when I was growing up, my mom loves music. And so I think I got in that trait from her growing up. And I've always loved listening to music. And I've had so many instruments I've gotten throughout my life because I love music. I used to listen to music 24-7. You could always catch me listening to music. <laughs> Even at the store, I'll be playing music off off a tablet, you know. <laughs> so how did you get into rap music? My oldest brother showed me uh, Sriracha by Tech 9 <laughs> And that was my first, that was the first. That was your I, intro. Yeah, yeah, that was the intro to rap for me. <laughs> <laughs> and Jordan Luke is going crazy. <laughs> so I loved it ever since. So you loved it ever since. Well, tell me about you growing up. Uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, I'm the youngest of six. Youngest actually. of six. So, yeah, and we grew, like, we, we moved around a lot. We weren't, we didn't, we never stayed in one spot throughout my life. Mm -hmm. um, most of my life, I grew up in Troy, uh, south side of Troy. It wasn't really too fond. I mean, my oldest brother got jumped from some situation that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, my second oldest brother got mugged. Um, we had like no money growing up, but you know, we, we, we did what we can to survive, you know? Okay. So, so you're not actually from Vermont. You're actually mm -hmm. South Troy. Yeah. But I guess you're repping Vermont now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so growing up, you know, difficult like that in, in difficult times, you know, I also know that a certain por portion of your life, you were homeless. Mm-hmm. Does that influence who you are now and your music oh, that you make now? Yeah, 100%. Because I feel like if I've never dealt with the things I've dealt with in the past, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Like, I wouldn't be... I feel like people who um, have such perfect backgrounds are more likely to become have an ego. And okay. so I feel like I don't have an ego in myself because of the background I grew up around. I'm, you know, I've... Been, been in that situation, you know? Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> You're 15 years old. Yeah. <laughs> You're 15 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and you had these, 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 a multitude of experiences that you've experienced. Um, how do you get into writing that down? What, what, how do you get into to putting that into your music? Because I have listened to your music and it's, it's kind of hard hitting and gritty. I mean, I don't expect that from, you know, a white kid from Vermont, but I now you, I know you're not from Vermont. I know you have some history, but how do you put that into your music? So basically, um, it was just like all the people I grew up around and, you know, the area I did and me kind of like some of the way I, I do talk about that stuff is because it's me what I'm talking about if I stayed in that area. Okay. But... Um, otherwise now my newer music, I'm trying to push away from that gritty music. I'm trying to go okay. on to more personal music and music people would, you know, can act, anybody can listen to and enjoy, you know? Okay. So you're, so you're moving, you're, you're evolving as a, as an artist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, when did you start, uh, uh, writing music? Uh, I actually started off producing when I was like around sixth grade and then okay. I started writing in seventh grade. What? I started writing music in seventh grade. Like a year after I started producing, I just started writing music. And then uh, I think my first song I've ever recorded was, I think, halfway through seventh grade. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we talking to a musical prodigy here or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, so you started young. Mm -hmm. and, and this is obviously your passion. Yeah. Um, is rap your passion? I wouldn't say just rap in general is my passion. I think music overall is my passion. Okay. Like, I feel like later down the line, I won't be making rap music. I'll be making some other genre. Uh, I don't know which genre of now, but I feel like in the future, I'm going to be working on some a different genre that people are going to like. Okay, because you do play guitar. Mm -hmm. So you are musically inclined. So, so that doesn't surprise me that you, that you may move around through genres. Do, do you find that, um, 
your rep maybe locks you into a genre though. I mean, because there are multi there are multiple facets of rap. I mean, there's multiple genres of rap. I mean, that you yeah. can move within the category. Do you find that that's what, that's what you may do, or is or is it just move completely out of it in the in something else? Now I do want to make this public. I do want to switch completely just for an album in the future. I want to make a country album. Oh wow! Because my gr- I've always loved country when I was younger, and my grandma wanted me to become a country star. So <laughs> I want to I want to so I want to make wanna my grandma that. happy. So I want to make a country album for her. Okay, okay, I like that. I like that. So 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 you're actually that's 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 amazing because um. You know, you're 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 15 years old, and you're saying I'm not going to be boxed in. I'm not going to let you know anyone box me into doing it. It's telling me I can't, and that that's really an amazing. That's that's a that's great. So, growing up with six brothers, well, six uh, siblings, um, and being the youngest of it, I imagine you probably had it rough. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know all the pranks were on me. Oh, God. <laughs> So, so how how is that and, and and how how has that changed you know and and uh now um i think um i i think it changed me to learn um to like respect what you get because like of course it's like I've of course thought my mom was giving my you know siblings better treatment than me. Of course, of course, because <laughs> you know when she buys someone something, she has to go get the other kids the same right. thing. But you know, even if she did got the other kids that I had to learn to deal with, I got you know. Okay. Because okay. even even if I would have never wish for a different life, I would want to wish to stay with my same family. Okay. So. I got you. So so so. <laughs> If I'm hearing you correct, what you're saying is kind of hardened you, you know, yeah. toughened you up a bit. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And what do your siblings think of what you're doing now with your music? They all love it. Okay. It's because like they all, um, I know they bullied me my whole life, but it was like um, they bullied me my whole life. But um... <laughs> well, just so you know, that's what older brothers and sisters yeah. are supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So I think I think it's good that they bullied me because it hardened it like hardened me up for when they actually leave. For when they leave, it, that, you're, that you're that you right. Yeah. I got you. So, and and okay, so so let me just toss it out there to you. How does a, a white kid from a white fifteen year old from Vermont invade the five one eight scene? How does that happen? So my oldest brother actually became friends with. Um, this guy named MBB Curls, who's okay. part of MBB, and Reese owns it, and he was the one running it and everything. And um, he got kicked out when he was a teenager, around my age, from his parents. And so my mom took him in, and he was living with us. And then when I started making music, my oldest brother, not my oldest, the second one that's like closest oldest to me, mm-hmm. he showed um, Curls my music. And Curls was like, yo, how come you didn't tell me you made music before? I could get you shows. I could do like talk about all the stuff we could do, and I was like, "All right, you know, let's do some." And then for his birthday, we went to go do a cookout, and then uh, that's where I met MBB Reese and SB and Astro Boomin and all these different people, and then that's where I locked in my first show. Oh, okay. So it it, it was not designed by you; it just happened like that way. Yeah, just like it just kind of happened, you know. Oh wow. So so what happened at that cookout that that got you into this? Um what's funny? Here's a funny story about that cookout. <laughs> so they had a big speaker of course playing music at the cookout. Astro is um making food and stuff and uh um I was like, "Hey, can I play some music?" And they were like, "Yeah." And they all didn't know I made music at the time, and I just started playing my music for like an hour straight. And no one noticed, like, no one said anything about it until Astro found out and heard and was like, yo, this is you? <laughs> and, then, and then that's when Rishi's like, yo, you got to pop out to his show. And I'm like, all right, I will. And, you know, wow. History ever since. And that's how, it, that's how it all started. Now, what was that first show like? It was, I was so nervous. <laughs> like, I was so nervous. And it's like, I only knew a few people there, but I didn't know them really close as I do now. And so though I was only hanging around my mom, but trying to also network with people, but I also didn't know how to network as like 
well as I do today. Right, you're you're brand new to this. Mm-hmm. And, and how were we? Were you received by the crowd? They all liked it. They were like, they're all thinking like, who's this? Who's this kid coming up on the stage? What is he gonna do? Like, I heard they were referring to you as who? Justin Bieber? Yeah, <laughs> they were all referring to me as Justin Bieber and. But I, I still went on there, and they were all rapping my lyrics back to me, so I was I was happy. Okay, so so so, <laughs> yeah. you know that that's funny because the rap crowd is a hard crowd to win over, mm-hmm. especially as a white kid. You yeah. know, as a white kid coming into the rap, <laughs> yeah. you really got to go out of your way to win them over. Especially in Albany. Dude. Yeah, they're not they're not gonna embrace you right on. They're, they're you gonna have to win them over. Yeah, so, I heard that. Um, 518 is like the hardest scene to get a fan base oh, off of because people love Hayden. They <laughs> are haters. So, so it's a very difficult uh, um, uh, 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 fan base to navigate. So mm-hmm. for you to come in there and, and, and you know, they, they give you a hard time at first. Yeah. But then when they hear the lyric, okay, okay, he's all right. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm well-respected in Albany. So. Okay. And, and now you've been branching out. Mm-hmm. So so tell me about that. You've been uh, down in the city doing some stuff. Yeah, I've been, uh, I'm almost done doing all five boroughs, performing all five boroughs in New York City, so. How's the reception been down there? Oh, it's been pretty good. I've, uh, I won one show there in Brooklyn. I won a thousand dollars off of it. Okay. So, you know, other shows, I wouldn't say it went perfect, but I think I got my name out there too, so. Well, that's, those are hard crowds too. Mm Mm-hmm. Those are very hard crowds, man, and they're hard crowds because, you know, when you travel somewhere like that. They have a fan base that's there. Yeah, you know, most of those artists have a fan base that's that's locked in right there. Mm-hmm. And here you are coming with just you. Yeah, you know, and, and and how do you find that? Do you find that difficult having to navigate this whole world, you know, with your mom? Because you know, mom's got to be there when she's fifteen years old. See, it is difficult, but I'm not gonna complain about it being difficult because I love you know me and my mom spending this bonding time together. Okay, and also like. Because I know my mom, she always was worried about her kids, that she didn't have time to go hang out with friends, her friends, or anything like that. So I feel like going to shows and stuff, what, like have her take a break, but also love her kids while on a break. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. So so I got you. So, so it allows you to, to, to get that time with mom that you didn't have and allows her to like, kind of let her hair down and you know, fall fall back a little bit and see what you're doing and, and get into that world a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, how is it a 15-year-old uh, rap? How does a 15-year-old rap about adult subjects? Uh, it. I feel like the only reason why I have a right to rap about what I rap about is because I grew up around that area. And, like, I've, I've been near gunshots. I've, you know, right. my mom, my mom witnessed shootings. I've, stayed up at night because of shootings and stuff like that so i've been around that stuff i wasn't a part of it but i've been a part like around it right so so you're you're 15 year old that that's lived a 25 year old's life yeah basically okay and, and do you find that difficult to 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 navigate that do you find it nif- difficult to talk about that stuff because some of that stuff you know uh, uh, is traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Do you find that difficult to talk about sometimes? There is some stuff, like there is some stories that I could tell, but it, it would be difficult for me telling. Like, okay, and and you know, as you grow as an artist, maybe you will tell those stories one day. Okay, now, um, now because you lived this this almost a double life, you lived this life in South Troy, and now you're living this life in Vermont. What is how's the difference in the worlds there? I think it's like it's so much calmer of where I'm at in Vermont now. It's mm-hmm. like so calm it, and like it's not hard to meet new people. Right. And it's like everyone everyone kind of is nice to everyone until you get on their bad terms. <laughs> Which is like the opposite with Troy. Troy it's like you won't talk to anybody new, only the people you know. <laughs> like <laughs> That's funny that you say that because that is so 518 though. Yeah. You know. And, and then in Vermont it's like Oh, we talk to new people. We we like meeting new people in five one eight. It's like I only like hanging around people I know. <laughs> now, how how's your music embraced uh, in Vermont? So it it it's weird to hear this, but 
it's actually all the kids my age that does not like my music at all. For some right. reason, I just I don't know why they don't like my music at all, and I guess they think I'm a joke. But well, could it be that they don't? Uh, you know, because a lot of times um, we don't like music because we don't understand the world that the music's coming from. Mm-hmm. So someone that grew up in Vermont um, really wouldn't know the world of South Troy. Oh yeah, you they know what would. I'm saying? Yeah. So so it's like it's like me and country music. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't dislike country music, but I don't get it. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it doesn't resonate with me because I grew up in Albany. Mm-hmm. You know, so could it could it be that that they just don't um, understand that how you're rapping about things that they can't understand? Yeah, I think it's about that, but also kind of a fact that I live in Vermont. And like, well, yeah, it, yeah. It, that's where you're at. That's not where you're from. Well, you know, yeah. and your experiences are not from Vermont. Mm-hmm. You know, so but but I, I think that that's, that plays a big part in it when when you're dealing with kids, um, they have a very difficult time understanding a world that's different than where where they are. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that could be the case. And you said the older people embrace it, you know, you embrace yeah. what you're doing. And, and that makes sense to me because the older people can understand that there's a bigger world than Vermont. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Bennington, Vermont, there's a bigger world than that. Yeah. So that, that does make sense to me. Um, how have you dealt with that, though? Because, I mean, you're you're making music and you're living in an area where your peers don't exactly accept your music. Sometimes I'll drop a little <laughs> sneak diss. Other times I just won't say anything. <laughs> and sometimes I just keep my mouth shut. And other times I'll drop a full diss track on kids. It really, it really just depends on how I feel. <laughs> so I, I, I heard that you just pulled off a show, though, there in mm-hmm. Vermont. Yeah. Tell me about that. It was a really fun show. Even though like not many people went there, I still felt like it was a successful show. For all the artists, how many artists got to network with each other? Okay. Like, this one artist I met named Sabo Baby, he, he's not from Vermont, but he lives in Vermont in the same town as me. Mm-hmm. And he didn't really know artists as much. Like, he didn't know anyone in Albany. And then when I brought all the artists out from Albany and the DJ at the show brought out him, he got to network with all those artists in Albany. And I know he is working with a few of them now. Okay. So, okay. So that's so- the only thing I think is a successful about it is that... People got to network and people got to, you know, work together. Okay. And no, that, that, that's actually a huge thing because what you're doing is you're actually bridging worlds. Mm-hmm. You know, you're bridging uh, maybe a, a real niche market in, in Vermont with a booming market in 518. So you're actually acting as a bridge. That, that's actually amazing for a 15-year-old. That's really amazing. So, so uh, um, big ups to you for that. Now, shout out my mom too. She's shout out your mom because yeah, she's the one that organized it. Yeah, she's helping me a lot. Okay. Did you have any difficulty bringing that show together? You know, being did Vermont was they you know were they worried about you know that whole hip hop crowd and stuff? So before that show, we did have a few like little open mics. We did an open mic with hip hop and stuff, and we wanted to do this show. The only problem with the show was um, the venue. We we were just, we were supposed to have it at a different venue, and then they got switched over to this one venue, but. That wasn't a really big deal. I liked the show. I think it was overall a successful show. Overall, so is it something that you you're you're planning to do again? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh for sure, okay. for sure. <laughs> and and I like the I like the uh, show the most was because um, I made it a secret like showcase, so artists didn't know that it was a showcase oh. until the end. So it was like, uh. Artists, it, it still showed that even artists didn't know it was a showcase. They were still supporting all the other artists that went up, that were performing. That's they were dope. still clapping. They were still, like, cheering for them. And then they didn't even know it was a showcase. Oh, that's so, fire. I like that. And and, and how, did, how do you think Vermont uh, will receive the next one? Do you think it will be better received there? Yeah, I think it will be better received because we showed that there was... No fault. There was no police call. There was no fights, and it was a nice, clean hip hop event. Right. So, so, so the whole um, stereotype around hip hop events, you kind of kicked in the door and said, "No, it's that's not the case." Yeah, it's kind of like, oh yeah, hip hop can be a thing around the world, and in like it could be a simple event in every place in the world without a problem. 
Right, right. I, I like that because that that's actually you're opening up the doors for new artists. And I and I hear at your open mics now that there may be a few more rappers showing up at open mics now. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me about that. So it was your first open mic, how was that? So my first open mic in Vermont, uh, it was a bunch of country artists and artists <laughs> and, and like and like cover bands and stuff. And I was the only rapper there and my family was the only one there. So it was just my siblings and my mom supported me. I was nervous. I was like, oh, how are these people going to think about it? But they enjoyed it. And then I brought some uh, artists out from Albany the second time. And they enjoyed that a lot that they kept on asking me to bring out those artists again <laughs> because they loved the artists so much. Wow. Wow, you really are. You really are kicking in doors. And I mean, that, that's that's amazing for a 15-year-old to... to, to be bridging worlds like that that's really is quite amazing yeah do you do you do you see yourself in that way as, as maybe a bridge i kind of do see myself um including my mom too i gotta point that out hey, but keep, I gotta, keep on big up in mom because she's yeah. doing this out yeah. there. That's, that's, I gotta, that's great i do gotta say that me and my mom are kind of a bridge for artists in for like albany to get their music out in a different state so it, like okay you know, if any artist wants, you know, be popping in a different state, you know, we'll, well help them out. you know, fan bases are, fan, you know, uh, artists, all artists are looking to go nationwide. Mm -hmm. You're looking to get from out of your area code to the next area code to the next area code to the next. Area. So that that's actually a nice logical jump. I mean, you know, artists should be working regions, yeah. you know, getting themselves out there. Yeah, they should be working county by counties, town yes. by towns. Yeah. Yes. And 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 have you started? I all your music is self-made, correct? Yeah, most of it. Most yeah. of it is. And and tell me tell me about that. How did how did you did you go to school for that? Where did you learn how to engineer your own music and make beats? And where, tell me about that. YouTube dot com. <laughs> <laughs> that helped me out. YouTube dot com is like one of the best things you can use. The best YouTube. classroom you can yes, get. Yes. Yes. I literally spent hours and hours and hours like with producing without I just spent hours just like watching videos of this producer making this beat and this beat because if people didn't, if like producers didn't know genius they like they make um, beat breakdown videos which shows the producer who made a famous song um, for example let's say Gold Digger by Kanye West right. Kanye West would be like hey yeah this is how I made the beat I did this this and this and so I just sat there and memorized all that just to take in how like drum like drums should sound and how melodies should sound and all this different type of stuff. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> so so you went to YouTube University and learned how to master and, and engineer and Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And and how old were you when you were doing that? Uh I was I sixth grade with producing. And then the writing, it kind of just, the writing part was off of me just listening to a bunch of artists over and over again. And so that, the writing part came from the artists I used to listen to all the time. But <laughs> Wow, that's pretty amazing. And, and, and so, so because you're, you're, I like to say self-made, um, do you find, have you worked with any other producers? I have worked with other producers, you know, producers on YouTube, but also producers in real life. Like, um, I do want to lock in with uh, a lot of producers in the future. I got a whole list of producers that <laughs> I have hit up already, and I got to lock in a budget with them. But, yeah, I'm, I definitely, I definitely want to start pushing myself more as a producer, too. Okay. Okay. So, I do want to get my beats out there and, you know. Wow. Wow, you're doing a lot. Yeah. Where do you find the time? There's 24 hours in a day. Um, I, I'm homeschooled, so I have, like, all the time in the world. In Vermont, it's like, you don't have to learn the, um, like, math, English, science, or right. any of that. You can learn anything as long as you have um, a certain amount of hours or days okay. in learning. And as long as you can write what you learn about doing it. So, like... I could just write a whole essay about how studio times and interviews and t like sh concerts and showcases help me um, learn this, this, and that, and I could still pass gotcha. it on my mop because of the laws. Okay, so, so it's very uh, uh, um, 
uh, uh, um, new style of schooling mm -hmm. that they that they've embraced in Vermont. A lot of actually a lot of states are doing that. Yeah. So it's not it's not uncommon. It's it's um all New York just hasn't. New York is New York. What can I yeah. say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what kind of equipment do you use in producing your music? I have uh, a gaming laptop my oldest brother gave me. So I use that for like the softwares. And then I have, I think, a BM800 or 300. It's, like, it's a microphone I got from uh, an old tenant of ours who used to make music. But he retired, so he was like, here, here's a microphone I have. And he gave me a mixer, but I couldn't figure out how to connect it. So my mom got me a Glow XLR mixer. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I'm not working with the best equipment. But I'm still using what I got. Right. Have you have you recorded any movie any music in the actual studio yet? Oh yeah, I've done. Uh, I've been to Astro Boomin Studio, Smash yeah. Studio. I've been to uh, Freedom Stratton Studio. Okay. Um, I've been to a studio in Texas, and okay. uh, I'm going to Florida this month. So hopefully, I get a studio out in Florida to do. <laughs> That'll be pretty fun. <laughs> Wow, that that's really amazing, man. You you're doing you're doing I mean more than I could would even expect a fifteen year old doing. I don't mean to keep harping on that, but I mean at the end of the day you're fifteen years old and and you're doing things that twenty five year olds aren't doing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And and what about marketing yourself? Is that your mom's job is is marketing her or is yeah. it Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm I don't really like being on social media a, a bunch, so I'm like always on Do Not Disturb. I'm kind of anti-social, but there'll be times where I'll do pop up on social media, throw a live, post my own stuff. But my mom normally runs my social media page and marketing and all that. Okay, okay, and, and does she find the showcases for you to to? Yeah, she does. But if I do hear about showcases uh, or shows, I'll send them over to her and. Okay. You know. So uh, so a real momager. Yeah, yeah, she's my manager. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and uh, and coming to the five one eight, you know, because I I realize not only is it a difficult crowd, but it's a difficult world, you know. And those showcases, those things are pretty high octane. I mean, I, I've seen some of them online. I've never gone to one, but I've seen them online. They're pretty high octane. How do you how do you like being at those those events? Um. Like, now that I know a lot of artists in Albany, I love being at them events okay. because, um, like I said before, my town, they all hate my music. So right. it's like, at these events, I can actually be myself when I'm performing. And, right. I, and I know some people in the crowd would actually like it, you know? Okay. Do, do, you, do you feel comfortable working the room as a 15-year-old with, you know, 24-year-old, 25, 27-year-old? Um, I've, I'm like... I gotta be in a certain mode, like if I'm in in that like area, I I won't talk to anyone unless I like actually know you. Okay. I've talked to you before, but if if someone I know be's like, hey, go talk to that person over there. He knows this person, this and this. And you can lock in network. I'll go talk to them. You know, I'll go up to okay. them and be like, hey, what's your social media? This and that. But if if I just see you, I'm probably not gonna just walk up to you. Okay. And how many features do you, uh, do you have any features? Have you done any features? Um, I've done, I have no, f like, I didn't feature on someone else's song that's out officially. Only okay. one song that's on SoundCloud. But I've had people featuring on my songs all the time. Okay. Okay. Now, is that something that you're going to do more of? Oh, yeah. I want to I wanna lock in with a lot of artists in Albany. Was, okay. I got a whole list. Oh. <laughs> so, so, how many, uh, Albums, EPs, or, or singles do you have out? I think like four or five. I got a, quite a lot. So What? Yeah, I got quite a lot out. Oh, you're a workhorse. Yeah, <laughs> I make a lot of music. How often are you dropping? Um, I used to drop like every week, but it's like now I'm kind of aiming for at least two albums a year. Probably three, wow. sing three singles a month, maybe. Holy so, cow! That's a... I want to stay consistent, but I also want to not be a consistent enough to keep people hyped up. Okay, okay. So, so, so you're always in the studio. You're always working. You're, you're, you're after this thing all the time. Then mm -hmm. I've like, 
if people realize how hard I put the work in, they'll be mind blown. Like I put so much work into this. Damn. That 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 I, I know what goes into um making a song. I've actually been, you know, a part of watching people. It, it's it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Uh, what about videos? Have you have you done any videos yet? I have one professional video out, and I have a video out that me and my friends just did. But okay. um, first video, this professional one, is called Faxo Freestyle. It's like a 90s song, like a 90 boom bap song. Okay. So all the old heads, you know, they all love that song. That song, I love. If it's like, um, I've been to a concert uh, my first concert I performed at, that was actually the song that people loved the most that made okay. me win, that helped me win it. Okay. So, and the second video out is my song called uh, Petco. It was a, um, it was a joke song I made. <laughs> and then my friend was like, hey, I like this song a lot. You should really release it. And I'm like, all right. And I was shooting at my friend's house and I told my brother, I was like, hey, take my phone, just record a few scenes and I'll go home and edit this music video and release it. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, have you have you thought about doing anything with like uh, the influence with Mike Miller, or uh, do you know who he is? Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah. Okay, so so he he should be on your list. <laughs> you yeah, know, you definitely should do something with him. Um, I wanted to lock in with him and um, Ice made it. Ice filmed it. Okay, Ice filmed it. Yeah, because he's part of uh, the collective I'm part of, MBE. Okay. So. Okay. Now tell me, being part of that group, what how did that work for you? Uh, I. I'm like, I'm not gonna look at it as like a label, but I'm gonna look at it like a collective. Okay. Like you know, Odd Future with Tyler the Creator. Yep. Yeah, they're all friends. But right, they're all friends. They're just they right. all make separate music too. Right. So that's how like MBE is. Everyone, we're all like a family. We'll all make music together, but we all make music separate, separate. and we're all independent. Okay. Okay. And um, working with them, do you find that to be a better networking opportunity because you're meeting more people or do you find that to be, you know, because you know everybody, you know, you're not really branching out from there. I feel like we're working with them since a lot of them are popular in Albany and I'm popular out in Vermont. Okay. If we collab, it'll get our music out in Vermont and Albany at like the same time. Okay. 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 And, and, and so what's on the horizon for you? Like in the future? Yeah. So I'm going to plan on dropping an album in August. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I Even though I dropped one in, uh, I think, March, but I want to drop one in August. It's because that's like, that's my birthday month. You know? Okay. I want to, I want to make this album very special to me and make it one of the best albums I put all my hard work into. Okay. And, 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 and are you planning on having features on that? Uh, bringing people together? Yeah, I gotta keep that a secret though. I gotta. Keep oh it come have. on! You know, what? here's what yeah, I want I'll, you to do. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll review one of the features I have. I'll review one of the features I have on here. I wanna. I'm having my boy Water Straight Cozy on there. He's like. Okay. So, he's like, I wouldn't say he's like a mentor to me, but he's like my brother. Okay. Okay, and um, how when you when you're putting together a. Uh, uh, an album, which which goes a lot more thought than just dropping an EP or a single. A lot more thought goes into you know, and, and work goes into it. Um, what's your workflow like? I usually like um, I usually like finding all the beats I want first for it, and finding out how many tracks I want okay. into the album. And once I figure that out, I'll start producing, you know, a lot of beats that I like. And then after that, I'll start. Um, trying to ask artists like hey you want to be on my album you want to be on my album and i'll start creating a list i see and and then that's when i'll start going in and writing lyrics so i like having a feature less list first before i write lyrics so if i have a song featuring with that artist i can like shout their name out and make like a fun creative way of me saying their name in a song with that artist okay know? okay so 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 there is a workflow to it mm-hmm. and, and it starts with for you, it starts with the beats. Yeah. And then finding uh, the, the people who are featured, getting them on board, and then you start putting a project together. And how, how long does it take you to put a project together like that? So when I make um, when I make projects, I don't really like 
focus be like, oh yeah, all this music's going on in this project. I just make a bunch of music like every day and with artists too. Um, that I put it in a category of like, this song sounds like this type of vibe and this type of vibe and this type of vibe because I don't want to have so many different vibes in the album. I want everything to kind of sound the same but be unique at like the same time. Okay. So, so in actuality, you're sitting on a lot of stuff now that you've done. Yeah, I have a lot of songs that I've sitting on. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Probably too many. <laughs> And, and and so so you're already putting together a a catalog mm-hmm. of yeah. your stuff. Yeah. So so sometimes if you want to release something, you can just reach into the catalog. Okay, yeah, here, here you go. Yeah, if I wanted to drop something today, I could be like, oh, here you guys go. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So um, first of all, I want to thank I want to thank you for coming to the show. Uh, thank it's you been for a great me. interview. I you know I'm really impressed with with. Yeah, and I'm going to say it again. I know it's getting redundant, but I'm going to say it again. It's it's, it's amazing. That I'm sitting across from a 15 year old, uh, who who as polished as you are, you know, and 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 you know, working your craft and taking your craft seriously, you know, that that's impressive to see. So I, I want to shout you out for that. Thank you. Okay. So thank once you. again, I want to thank you for coming out and tell the people where they can find you at. They can find me at all platforms. Faxo Hazard, F A X O H X Z R D. Faxo Hazard on all platforms. There you show you're on Instagram, uh, Facebook, mm-hmm. TikTok. Yeah. And your music is at Spotify, um, Apple Music, mm-hmm. and uh, Google Music. Yeah, I think it's on like every platform. Okay. So. Well, good. Uh, thanks for showing up, fella. Yeah. Have a good um, one. You too.